All right, so this is problem number 11 and 12 combined with your chapter nine homework. Let's take a look. And so on this one, you have a basket purchase. So they tell you that they bought a building and land for $182,000 cash. And then they have the, this says that the land is estimated to represent 70% of the purchase, purchase price. And then the company, in addition to this, spent $22,000 for building renovations. So you got to figure out how much of all these costs are going to go to land or building. So to do that, we go down. So we got that 70%, 30%. So to show you the calculations right here, the total cost of 182, you'd say 70% of that would go to the land. So you're going to be debiting land for 127, four. 30% of that amount would go to the building plus the other $22,000 that they spent renovating the building. So total for the building would then be 76.6. Total cash credited or spent would have been 204,000. Okay, so then on the second part, it says we want to, this is for parts three and four, they want you to compute the straight line depreciation on the building at the end of one year, assuming an estimated 12 year life, $4,600 residual value. And then they want the book value of the land and the building at the end of part two. So we already got the cost for the building. So to get that depreciation expense and to get to the book value, so you've got, remember the cost is 76.6 minus residual value divided by 12, you'd get $6,000 as your depreciation expense. And if that would be the case, they want this at the end of year two on part B, so you do 6,000 for two years, that's 12,000. So 76.6 minus 12,000 would be your book value of that building after two years. <clears throat> the land, the 127.4, you do not depreciate the land. Uh, it has an indefinite life. So whatever they paid for the land, the cost that was allocated to it initially is also the book value. And so that I believe would take care of both parts three and part four. All right. I think that's it on this particular problem. And then, of course, they're showing you at the bottom there the same calculations. All right. So that's 11 and 12. <clears throat> Let's check out 13. And on 13, again, they want us to do depreciation for straight line units and double declining balance. And then they wanted to ask us some questions about how income is compared uh, depending on which method they had used. So on part A, again, this is gonna be for a five-year life. Let's go back. We know the cost was 22,000, residuals two. And then of course, they give you the production numbers for the units of production method. And of course, we'll need that five years for the rate for the declining balance method. So down below, let's show you, first of all, a straight line method, how they get the numbers. So again, cost minus residual value, divide by five. So $4,000 would be your depreciation expense for straight line method. And then of course, they're showing you that the cost was 22 up here. The accumulated depreciation again will go up by 4,000 every year. The book value goes down by 4,000 every year. Notice that the book value equals the residual value at the end of its life. So that would be part A. Part B would be your units of production method. Notice that it uses the same base, <clears throat> depreciable base that the straight line method uses, except it's 10,000 hours. And then of course they give you how many hours are, pro are produced each year. That essentially is your rate. You multiply that by your base and then you get the respective depreciation expenses, which you would plug in right here. And then of course your accumulated depreciation goes up each year. And notice that the ending book value also equals your residual value at the end of five years. Now, when you get to the double declining balance method problem, so notice the rate is two over five. So to start with, you've got 8,800, and then notice you're updating your book value as you go. You still multiply by that two fifths until you get to that last year. And in that last year, I'll show you up here, you only had $851 to get to that 2000. Remember, that's kind of like a forced book value at the end of year five. So in year five, just be careful on this one, that's gonna be a plug number. You have to force that depreciation expense to give you that book value that equals the residual value. All right, 
And so in that case, then once you get there, and then of course they say, which method gives you the highest net income? Well, it would be straight line because it would give you the lowest depreciation expense under all the methods. And then part B uh, says, does higher net income mean that the machine was used more efficiently? Again, the depreciation method used has nothing to do with efficiency. It's all about cost allocation. So the answer there, of course, would be no. All right, 14 through 16. Let me move this over so you can see it. So on this one, again, we'll look at some more disposals. <clears throat> so they tell us that we've got uh, some aircraft, some ground vehicles, and assume that they sold a truck for 16,000. So they sold a truck. They had originally bought the truck for 28,000 and had recorded depreciation for uh, three years. So they said, um, calculate the amount of gain or loss, assuming they're just gonna give you what the accumulated depreciation would have been, either A, 12,000, B, 10,000, or C, 15,000. So remember, all you do is you compare the book value to how much cash you're getting. And so remember, they sold it for, was it 16,000? So in each case, for part A, assuming that we're selling it with an accumulated depreciation of 12,000, so you got 28 minus 12, you compare that, that's actually 16, so there's no gain or loss if it's part A. On part B, you would have a book value of 18,000, 28 minus 10 would be 18. They only received 16, so that would be a $2,000 loss. And then on part C, it looks like you have a book value of 13 and you got $16,000 received, so that would actually be a gain of 3,000. So then on the second part, they just wanna show you how that would first of all affect the accounting equation. And of course, you have the $16,000 coming in, get rid of the equipment and get rid of the accumulated, accumulated depreciation. Notice on the no gain or loss um, option, uh, there, nothing else is affected under the equation, only the assets. On part B, when you have that loss, notice you got the cash increased, decreased equipment, decreased accumulated depreciation, and of course you have that loss that would affect the equity. And then the third one, again, you got the same cash coming in, get rid of the equipment, get rid of the accumulated depreciation, and again, that gain would be affecting stockholders' equity. And then the last one is simply what the journal entries would look like. Notice in every one of them, you got the debit to cash, debit accumulated depreciation, credit equipment. Notice that's just getting rid of uh, the book value. You're getting it for your book value, so there's no gain or loss. Part B, notice you've got the cash debited, debit accumulated depreciation, credit equipment, and the plug number goes to loss of 2000. And the same thing in part C, except you'll notice that the plug number will go to the gain. To make sure your debits equal your credits. All right. That takes care of my comments on 16. All right, so let's check out number 17. And on 17, they have several things they want you to do on these intangibles. They have, first of all, for you to account for the cost and then the amortization, if any, and then show how they would be reported on both the balance sheet and the income statement. So part A says you purchased a patent for 9,300, so that would be your cost that you're gonna capitalize. So that's part one for patent. On the trademark, it said you registered with the government for 10. The estimated value is 200 because it has an indefinite life. That estimate is actually irrelevant. It's what they paid for. That's the amount that would be capitalized as the trademark at 10,000. Now on this one, because it has an indefinite life, you're not gonna amortize it, but we'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> Part C, you've got licensing rights that you purchased for 60. That's gonna be what you capitalize. Now, each of these gave you the life. So the first one you had 15 years. And then, of course, the trademark was indefinite. And then the licensing was five years. So when we get to part two, they want us to figure out how much you're going to amortize. So for the patent, you're just going to divide that by 15. And they're showing you that right here. You just take that 9,300 divided by 15. Your yearly amortization would be 620. The trademark is not amortized because it's an indefinite life, so nothing there. And then for the licensing, it's a five-year life. You just divide by five, it's gonna be $12,000 per year amortization. And then of course, part three, 
you just really just have to add up uh, what that accumulated amortization would be for the first year. It'd be the 620 plus the 12, so you get 12,620. And then on the last part, just to show you how this would wind up on your balance sheet. So the first three are listed at cost, and then you just have a uh, contra asset accumulated amortization for that 12,620. That would be as a negative under your assets that would show that you're reducing your assets by that amount. And I believe that's it on 17. All right, 18 and 19. So on this one, we're gonna have a change in our depreciation because we're changing the cost. So in this problem, you'll note that they give us equipment at 160, and at the beginning of the year, you already had accumulated depreciation of 100. It says during the first week of January, they incurred the following for repair and maintenance. You got a routine, which is 1850, and then you got a major overall. So the 1850 will simply be expense, but that 24,000, you're going to capitalize that because it's improving the life of the asset. It's a major, extraordinary repair. It tells you that initially they were depreciating this over straight line over 15 years with a $10,000 estimated residual value, and the accounting period ends on December 31st. So on this one, what you first have to do is you want to figure out, first of all, how many years have you depreciated? So if you go back to this part right there, you can figure it out. So if your initial cost was 160 and you subtract out that residual value of 10, that gives you what 150, and then divide that by what 15, we know that they would be depreciating $10,000 per year. We also know that if the accumulated depreciation was at 100, that they must have depreciated this equipment already for 10 years. So I, why that's important is because right now we wanna know how many years are remaining. And so in this case, we would have five years left to depreciate after we make this ordinary or extra repair. So to figure out the depreciation, let me move this down. I'll show, see if this just show you the calculation. You've got that initial book value you add that 24,000, so your new basis will be 84. You still subtract the residual value, and then you're dividing by five because that's how many years are left. So that's where they're gonna be getting that 14,800 of your new depreciation expense. So this will be your change in your estimate type of deal. Now on the second part, they're just showing you what the actual journal entry looks like, and that's just your, your standard debit depreciation expense credit accumulated depreciation. All right, and I think that's 18 and 19, so that would be that, and then I think there's one more. And on this one, it's just going to be another disposal deal. So we've got machine A and machine B. We got machine A was sold for 9,000, and then on part B, machine B was sold to a salvage company at zero proceeds. So they want us to show you what the journal entry effect would be on uh, disposing of machine A. So notice we're getting 9,000 cash, you know we're debiting cash nine. We've got accumulated depreciation that has to be debited. We're gonna credit the cost of 30. That 600 would of course be a flood number. And in this case, it's gonna be a gain. And if you want, sometimes I think it's probably a little more helpful to actually draw this out um, just to kind of get your mind wrapped around what do you've got here. So um, we've got the book value of machine A, which would be the cost of 30 minus that accumulated depreciation of 21.6. So that book value was initially at 8,400. And when they sold it for, what was it, 9,000? Again, just to show you, that's again where they would have come up with that gain of $600. Now under machine B, in this case, you had a cost of 59.2, an accumulated depreciation of 44. So you're gonna subtract that. 
and your book value would be right at 15.2. So if that's your book value and you simply sold it for nothing, you scrapped it, so that actually would be your loss, which would be 15.2. So that's where they would be coming up with that amount as your loss on disposal. All right, and I believe that would be it on my comments on your chapter item.